doesn't every writer wish that they could write more i mean just think about it if only we could write more we could achieve all of our writer dreams i'm talking about making more money becoming a best-selling novelist fulfilling ourselves creatively and just being happy before we get into today's video, I want to share a quick word from today's sponsor, Shortform. Shortform is a platform that has over a thousand book summaries and book guides. They cover a ton of genres, including self-improvement, marketing, and even fiction. I used it to finally read Deep Work by Cal Newport. And honestly, like, I thought I knew what the book was about, but looking at the summary actually let me take away some pretty key insights that I didn't have before. Like, for example, Cal was like, you should probably be scheduling internet time in advance and avoiding internet outside of that. And I was like, huh, pretty smart. And to even consider totally changing up your environment when you work on deep work versus regular shallow work like emails. Shortform publishes new guides and new book summaries every single week, and subscribers actually get the chance to vote on which books they should do next. To get a five-day free trial and 20% off your membership, you can go to the following link, shortform.com forward slash Zuli. Thank you so much. Now back to the video. What's in the way of us learning how to write more? I mean, mechanically, the act of writing isn't difficult. You sit down at a keyboard and you type and words come out, right? Learning how to write more and overcoming the obstacles that are stopping you from writing more isn't physical, it's emotional. It's, some might say, psychological. Hi, my name is Zuli Rain. I am a blogger, vlogger, content creator, and I create content that helps you grow your blogging empire. This video is about helping you write more. What inspired me to make this video is the predominance of writing advice out there that is like, oh, if you want to write more, try timing yourself. Try hitting a word count. Have you tried finding more time in your life? And the problem with all this advice is it, it works up to a point, but it doesn't actually address the cause of the issue, which is that every writer has a slightly different writer's block, right? So I wanted to address a couple of ways that you can write more. Okay, step one. Step one to identifying your block is mapping it out. Sit down and write. I want you to document exactly what happens. Do you have a blank mind? Do you have a confused mind? Do you find that as soon as you sit down, your cat is in your lap demanding to be fed? Do you find that as soon as you sit down, you worry that what you write isn't gonna be good? Once you've figured out the thing or things that are stopping you, you wanna write it down. I want you to try to capture as close as you can to the reality of what's going on in your little head as you sit down to write, write, Dear diary, today I sat down to try to write and my wife instantly texted me because she needed help opening a pickle jar. So that's step one, figure out your problem and document it. On to step two. Step two is to document your own time and energy levels. So I wanna do this to kind of either prove or disprove the myth of, oh, you can always write more if you can just find the time. That face was me indicating what I think of that advice. So much, so much writing advice is like, oh, just grind it out, consistency matters. Just write a little bit every day and see what happens. And it ignores the reality that for a lot of people <laughs> in today's economy, we have multiple jobs, right? We have families, we have responsibilities, we're paying off student debt. We are emotionally and creatively exhausted um, from work, from school, from family responsibilities. There are a lot of reasons, legitimate, genuine reasons that you don't have the time or energy to write. I once worked with a writer who was at this, uh, I won't say exactly what kind of job. It was very demanding. It was very exhausting. It was extremely customer facing. And when she got home, she just didn't have the time or energy to write an article. Creative drain is real. When you spend all day solving problems for other people, sometimes you get home and all you want to do is watch Netflix and that's okay. And worse, she actually felt guilty because all these people were hollering at her like, oh, you just need to make the time to write easy to say, hard to do. My solution for her and for you, if you find yourself in this situation, is see what happens when you literally just try to write for five minutes, okay? So there are two things that this is gonna solve. First of all, you're gonna see, maybe you don't have five minutes. Maybe you don't have five minutes to yourself and that's okay. That's, we're gonna move on to a different problem if that's, if that's not the answer. And B, sometimes the creative barrier is higher than the energetic one. You sit down to write an article and the thought of writing a whole article is exhausting, so you don't write anything at all. The barrier is really high. However, if you sit down with the intention of just writing for five minutes, worst case scenario, you have five minutes worth of writing. Best case scenario, and this has happened to me when I'm emotionally exhausted, is I find that 
just once I get started, the floodgates open and I do like the hardest, most energetic part was finding the energy to start, not necessarily the energy to continue. So best case scenario, you write for you know 10 or 15 minutes or even 30, even if it's on your phone, even if it's a voice memo, even if it's a tweet that counts and that is that counts for something that is writing. Step number three, define your expectations. Okay, if you sat down for five minutes and found that you had no problem doing that or even for half an hour, that's perfect. We're on to step three now, which is defining your expectations. And that means honestly answering the question, what do you want to accomplish with this work that you're about to do? Um, I've found in my experience that writers often have uh, very high, uh, somewhat unrealistic expectations of what they want to achieve with their writing. And because a lot of us know a lot about what we like in our in other people's writing, we find it hard to sit down, look at our own mediocre writing and say, yeah, this is worth continuing because to us, it feels like it isn't. It's not as good. Um, there's no point in trying. And the reason for your high expectations doesn't matter that much. Just the fact that there is an expectation that is unreasonably high. It can be because you want to be like the next Stephen King. You want to just be better than you were last week. And last week you had a stroke of brilliance that you're not going to replicate for another year. That's the reality of writing. That's okay. So take a note of your expectations and literally write down, what do I want to achieve with this? Do I want to just get something out there? Do I want to write something beautiful? Do I want to reach my target readers? What are you trying to do with this work? And reflect on that. Is that a reasonable expectation? Don't expect to win awards. Don't expect to go viral. Don't expect that this is going to move some t someone to tears. It may well do, but if you sit down with the expectation hovering over your head like a guillotine, you will not be able to write. It's much, much harder to write with the weight of those expectations dragging you down. If your expectations are reasonable, then you can move on to step four, but if not, use this moment to take stock. Step number four, you want to force some respect. So remember in my earlier example of the writer sitting down to do her writing and then her wife is instantly like, oh, Lucinda, can you come open this pickle jar for me? That is a sign of somebody else not respecting your writing time. But more importantly, it's also a sign of you not respecting your writing time. This happens a lot, um, especially for people who aren't earning money with their writing just yet. Sometimes the block doesn't look like somebody asking you to do something. Sometimes it looks like you know, a work email comes in, a pet pats your arm, something happens, your flow gets interrupted, and you're like, you know what, my time would be better spent doing something else, not my own writing. I did this with my fiction writing, which is unpaid. I found myself always prioritizing my paid writing over my fiction writing, and I was getting in the way of my own dreams. I want to be a fiction writer. Why was I letting my, you know, monetized blog posts get out in front of it? And it was because there was no money in it. I just set aside the entire day of Thursday um, which I don't use on any kind of work. I just focus on my fiction novel specifically to do that. And on Thursdays, I don't answer work emails. I don't work on work projects. I don't do SEO research. I write my novel. That's what I do. And I had to draw that hard line because I kept not respecting my own writing time. Take a time, block it off in your calendar. Maybe it's lunch break. Maybe it's, you know, 10, 15 minutes after the kids go to bed. Maybe it's you get up an hour early in the mornings. Now, again, you you might not genuinely have the time or energy. That's okay document that and that way next time you feel guilty about not writing you can look back and be like oh yeah no I, I genuinely don't have the time or energy to write that's fine but make sure that that's the case you should go without saying but if there's a genuine emergency like if your house is on fire uh, obviously deprioritize your writing over getting yourself and your loved ones out of the burning house So at this point, just to reiterate, you have cataloged your energy and creativity levels. You've defined your expectations. You've forced respect for your writing from yourself and hopefully from the people around you too, who if they love you, they should support you. Now it's time to try to catalog your own state of mind. So if you sit down and you genuinely have no ideas or worse, this happens to me, you have too many ideas and too many thoughts and you're having a hard time forcing them onto a page. This is also a cause of writer's block. So if you want to write more, I recommend trying a template. A template forces structure on you. If you're sitting down and you're struggling to write something, I want you to try one of three things. A, try a listicle. A lot of writers, my past self included, look down on listicles as kind of like cheap or like lesser than writing because people think they're easy to do. They get that reputation because they are easier to do. A listicle is a forced structure. That's why they're easier to write. 
I think listicles get a bad rap, but they are great for breaking through writer's block and helping you write more because they're a well-known, easy to focus on structure. Number two, once you've mastered the listicle, I want you to try the PSS, problem, symptoms, and solution. So this one is very, very easy to do because we all have problems in life. Think of a problem, like your cat keeps coughing up hairballs. Think of the symptoms. You feel kind of crappy because you're like, oh, is my cat not happy? Uh, you have to spend a lot more time cleaning than you would like, and your cat is maybe not as healthy as you'd like. And then think of the solution. You can brush your cat more. You can get some special non-hairball food. You can go to the vet and see what the vet has to say about all these horky hairballs. It's a very easy structure because we all have problems. We can all describe the symptoms, and mostly we can all think of some kind of solution that might work. Template number three that I recommend is the controversial rant. So what you're going to do here is take a well-known or, you know, a piece of conventional wisdom that everybody is familiar with, flip it on its head and talk about your experience doing that. So for example, one of my pieces of conventional wisdom that I absolutely detest is that passive income is easy because I don't think it is. Every time I have a hard time writing an article, I often lean on that. I, I go to see what people are recently saying about passive income. I draw inspiration from that and I say, you know what? This is what people say. This is what I experience and this is what I do instead. It, it incites emotion in you and emotion makes it easy for you to write. Um, and it takes that emotion and funnels it through a structure of talking about what other people are saying, what you feel and what you do instead. Okay, those are the five steps to writing more. So this is not a one size fits all video. Depending on where you are in life and where you are in your writing journey and how you're feeling on this particular Friday as you watch this video, this five step flow is gonna feel a little different to you. You might find some tips are laughable now, but in six months you're like, oh, Zulie was right. I wanna end by saying it's okay if you go through this five step process and you genuinely feel like you just can't write. If you're watching this video, you probably want to be a writer and that's really the only thing you need. And it's so easy to feel like life's gonna pass you by and you're not gonna write anything. If you're beating yourself up over that, I want you to stop. Remember that writing's always gonna be here for you. You don't have to chase fame or success or the, the next greatest platform that just happened to, to make it worthwhile. Anytime that you feel that writing is a, that it's a good time for you to start writing, writing will be there for you. Writing has been, ever since it was invented, it has been there and people have used it to express themselves and to communicate with others. In a thousand, two thousand, ten thousand years, writing will still be there. The pressure of feeling guilty because you can't write is one of the worst writing blocks there is. So I want to remove that as my final stop. It's okay if you can't write today, as long as you remember that you can still try tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this helps you write more. I know that writing more is feels like the answer to a lot of our prayers and I hope if one if not all five of these tips can help you get through a tough writing time. Hope everyone has a great rest of your week and I'll see you in the next video.